Hello and welcome back. Don't you look lovely today? Today I want to talk about sound and today I'm focusing on this, the TS-464. This is another part in my series of videos where I want to talk about just how these bad boys sound. Whenever you've got a NAS in your home or office environment, there's no avoiding it. These things can get noisy, but the range of noise they make actually differs quite wildly. And in this series of videos, there's probably going to be about 15 parts to this throughout the year, I'm going to look at particular NASs that are very, very popular and I'm going to test them with a wide variety of media. With each of that media, the audio levels are going to change. And therefore, I'm going to help you decide not only whether a NAS is going to be quiet enough for your own uh, personal setup, but also I'm going to help people understand the difference the different media makes. Not only because different media is built very differently, but also because NASs with different fan levels, with different architecture of cooling, actually can make significantly more noise than others, even though they look near enough identical. But before we go any further, I should probably go for a few disclaimers. Now, first and foremost, I want to talk about hard drives and why they make more noise, because a number of you watching this video are going to watch the bits where I've got SSDs and go, okay, that's pretty quiet. Why are these two drives that seem near enough identical definitely different in noise and the reason for that is is because of design of hard drives there is the design of a hard drive that's got a mirror that's really mucking with the lights in this room in there is a little circular disc that is the platter that spins incredibly fast and that has got your data on it while it's moving there's a little arm called an actuator that's moving around reading the contents of that drive more enterprise level hard drives um, are built bigger with more platters and have to spin up spin down and the actuator moving a great deal more uh, faster and egregiously throughout the whole drive an example of an enterprise level drive that we're going to be looking at is this the wd ultra star this is built for data centers and it's incredibly industrial in design it's a 10 tb drive a drive that's less industrious and more domestic would be that of the WD Red or the Red Plus, a 4TB that we're going to be looking at today. These drives represent different areas of the hard drive market and make their own respective noise differences. But of course, the quietest drives in the market are, of course, SSDs. This is a Kingston DC500. And on, in our testing, we're going to be looking at three different areas. We're going to be looking at the noise the system makes at boot, so when we first turn it on. Well, then we're going to look at idle noise, and idle noise in our testing is going to be when the drives are not being accessed. Network access and system status, that light will almost certainly be blinking because there's going to be pinging and stuff. But idle is when the drive is not being accessed and in a spin-down state. And then after that, we're going to be looking at high access. We're going to be looking at bombarding a drive with high 4K IOPS. So again, there's going to be the system booting up, there's going to be the drive in idle, and there's going to be the drive with high 4K access. Now, why 4K random access? Next disclaimer. Because if we did sequential data interaction, and sequential otherwise known as big data, your movies, your inline data, that would not tax that actuator and the platters as much, whereas 4K random needs to be accessing the disk in a number of different ways all simultaneously or very, very quickly as high as possible. And although the IOPS on hard drives is significantly lower than that of SSDs, it still needs to work very hard. So in the case of all three of these, when we do our performance testing, we are looking at 4K random IOPS performance. Uh, next disclaimer, the ambient noise in this room. Some things can't be avoided, even if you are watching this in a room on your own and you think it's silent, which is weird because I'm talking at you, but if the, your phone wasn't on, it's not actually silent. There is an inherent noise there and with a lower dB level, but there's all kinds of noises in the air, which I can't remove. I can't remove a lot of them. I'm in an, an office block here. I can't just remove that noise. So there will be ambient noise, not only from surrounding offices, from little gits like this where there's also of course if you've watched this channel before we have seagulls i'm here by the seaside you may hear them during the course of the recording so i apologize if they're there but we've got a decibel monitor on screen that will be showing the results in a graph and with the ratings being shown to you there but do bear in mind that there is a slight delay between the noise you hear and the db monitor there on the charts it won't be millisecond perfect it will be somewhere between a third and a half a second difference between the decibel meter and the noise you hear there on screen next when i've gone through the audio recordings and the audio there uh, that's being recorded what i've done is utilize a mic that i've wired up to a db monitor and 
I've ramped up the volume 50% so you can identify the noises. The result is you will hear a high level of hiss in the background, but the reason for that being because I've ramped up the volume 50% uh, 50 in order for you to hear the inherent difference. So even though it may seem louder with a s in the background, a lot of the time that will be because I've ramped them all up. Don't worry, when you scale it down, they're still all largely the same there. It's just the only way that I could show you those noises and hear them audibly from a distance of a foot there. And also bear in mind that hard drives, even when they're not being accessed, make more noise because of that drive that's spinning inside. It's a general hum and that light vibration there. Now, apart from that, that's really it. I've made audio recordings before, and I know this is a long intro, I do apologize, but I'm not going to be talking again in the rest of this video. It's only going to be the audio recording. So you can read everything you see on screen, but it's just a lot of people that have seen my other recordings aren't a big fan of me talking over them, which makes a lot of sense. So in a moment, I'm just gonna give way to the recordings to show you exactly how this, the TS-464, sounds with SSDs, with um, WD Red hard drives and Ultrastar Enterprise level hard drives inside there. We're going for two discs of each because I didn't have four of each to, ha to hand in the studio. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy these recordings for what they are. Uh, maybe I'll see you at the end of the video where we wrap things up. Start going in.
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these sound series videos. I know they can be incredibly tedious just listening to near enough silence and a few clicks, but a lot of you have requested this series. If you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. Take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. Uh, other than that, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Have a great year, and I'll see you next time.